when I'm playing football manager, I'm not interested in a realistic match. I'm interested in having fun because it's a game after all. And I want to see my strikers score loads of goals. And if you've been following my live streams lately, you'd have noticed me playing with a system that sometimes creates as many as five clear cut chances a game. Today, it's time to share with you the system I've been using called Monty Python. Over on BTN Live, we have a journeyman challenge where our manager takes over relegation threatened clubs. He did that with Napoli, took them from relegation trouble <laughs> into the Champions League using Monty Python, the system that creates so many goal scoring chances. I decided let's give it a go with uh, other clubs too. So I tried to play with Manchester City. And when Manchester City, Liverpool didn't like the system very much. They conceded a hat-trick to Erling Haaland. Then Chelsea conceded another hat-trick to Erling Haaland. In fact, quite a few teams conceded hat-tricks to Erling Haaland. And this was just at the start of the season. Now, things got from bad to worse for the league. And Tottenham decided the best way to stop Erling Haaland was to basically see him stretch it off. And, well, we stuck in another guy in the goal-scoring position and he scored a hat-trick. It was like, you know, if Erling Haaland is an ear, somebody else is just going to score goals. So what is this system all about? Now, this is the Monty Python system, the system that uh, Napoli and a few other clubs are using. And it's got several features in the tactic. Now, of course, it's strikler. Some of you might not like strikler systems, but hey, man, if you're going to smash the match engine, let's smash it really well so that... Um, the match engine gets better in the long run and the only way to do it is to smash it with lots of goals. Currently on Football Manager, back five systems can be very strong, but you need to have a plan A and a plan B and this is no different. The main features of this system lie in the fact that yes, we can defend with seven players. We've got these three up top. It's strikeless. It utilizes, pass into space, but at the right time. As far as I'm concerned, strikeless tank, this can be very defensive because hey, we're not committing too many players into attack. But amazingly, this tactic defends with seven and creates a five-channel attack in transition. What this means is those wingbacks are going to shift up, giving you five in attack. When this happens, you've got a chance to utilize pass into space. And you could get deadly balls going over the top at defenders and defenders just can't handle this very well. Now, against really good sides, you might not be able to sell those uh, balls over the top so well because the defenders can read the danger. Then what I normally do is I remove pass into space and get around the defense, which is also possible because those players are just going to come up the pitch and then drop in crosses. This is why this shadow striker, when you decide on this goal scorer, he's going to be an important part of the tactic. You want somebody who's fast and somebody who is also physically capable. Erling Haaland is absolutely devastating in this position. The system has got different attacking patterns. Now, when we are building up play, these wingbacks go up the pitch. We've got a ball-winning midfielder here on defense, a roaming playmaker here. We've got a ball-playing defender and a wide centre-back on defense duty. Now, this means that it's rock-solid defensively. But what if I decided, hey, you know what? I want, really want to push for a goal. And that's when I take chances. This is the final gambit in the tactic. When I want to play the final gambit, I normally go wingbacks on attack. And I'll convert this white centre-back from defend to attack duty. I'll take this ball-playing defender, go white centre-back on attack duty. Then what I get is a lot of attacking thrust from these wing-backs. Then add underlaps on them so that they are positioned high up the pitch. Then the widest players look for runs on the inside. And we've got plenty of players doing those kind of runs. In fact, what you will sometimes see is the white centre-back going, getting so high up the pitch, he is creating goal-scoring opportunities for other players. Naturally, this is a gamble because if your players aren't good enough, you could open up space down the flanks and the AI could very easily score a cheap goal against your team if you don't have good defenders or if your players aren't very good at building up play this is a risk you might not want to take. But you see me do this many times on my streams when I just want to go crazy and attack a team. Yes, if you feel like me and you just want enjoy these kind of yo-yo games, have fun. I have fun all the time. The tactic also comes with set-piece routines. I've got the defend routines and I also got attack routines. Now, the defend routines are fairly simple. Put your best uh, jumper hitter here in these positions. You want to cover these three at all costs. You also want to have one player mark and one mark tall at all times for a defensive corner routine. 
What? When it comes to the attack corner routines, man, we've been scoring goals from the near post, the far post, all season long. What do you want to do is you want to make sure that your best, the player with the best jumping reach strength is here in this position. Ideally, he should also have aggression. Now, you want to put him here and then we've got another routine, which is the far post routine. And I've got another routine, which is the short routine. All the routines are here. It cycles through each routine, you know, whenever... Whoever takes the corners is just going to pick the routine he enjoys the most. So I recommend trying these routines out. They're a lot of fun. Uh, we've been scoring a few goals. I mean, we could actually put this guy here if you wanted. No, you just have to defend with two. And it's been scoring goals for us regularly. So this is the final gambit when you want to attack, you know, if you want to push for goals. Now, of course, uh, this position here gets changed quite a lot in some of my games. Sometimes I play him as a white center, but a defense. In case I want to be a bit more defensive. Sometimes if I want him to play a big part in attacks and sometimes create assists, I play him as a white center back on attack. You can also play him as a white center back on support. But you notice one thing, right? For each setting, the PIs are there. So he's got take more risk, cross more often, cross in far post, mark tighter. This is the white center back's uh, PIs. Now, if you change, you can, you can choose to play him as a ball playing defender if you wanted to, but I normally don't. This, I reserve for this position. He's marked tight as a white centre-back on attack. But in most games, he's playing as a ball-playing defender. On defence, he's got dribble more and mark tighter. The guy on cover, he's just told to dribble more. He's not told to take more risks. He's already doing that already. So we don't need to ask him to do more than that. Now, uh, in this position, the two wing-backs, they're normally on wing-back with cross in far post and mark tighter. I normally tell them to play on support. In most of my games, you notice the PS are still the same. Here we got wing back on support. He's already been told to mark tighter. This guy's been told to cross in far post. Then here the ball winning midfielder on defense has no um, PIs. This guy has got no PIs. The AM on attack takes more risk, dribble more, move into channels. The shadow striker doesn't anything do anything special. Here take more risk, dribble more, move into channels for the other AM on attack. So now let's talk about the three in front. This trio is a very important trio. When I pick players for this, I'm looking for creators on either side of the Shadow Striker because this these players are feeding into the Shadow Striker. Now, what we want are players who can do this stuff. Taking more risks, dribble more, move into channels. Why take more risks? Because it affects movement as well as decisions when they have the ball. Dribble more, we just want them to attack. Moving through channels, getting in between players and spaces. Same with this position over here. He's got the same play instructions. The Shadow Striker in the middle has got no peculiar instructions given to him he doesn't need that and we've got um in most cases i'll be playing like this with the focus play left and right this allows the white center back to shift to the right side of the pitch when we're building up play remember that these two players also need to have acceleration and agility you want them to get away from defenders they have to have acceleration normally i will settle for 14 higher is good but if you have a player who's got 17 you don't want somebody to be faster than the shadow striker, right? So you want these three ideally not to be too far apart in terms of the acceleration because once you have a player here who's got like 20 for acceleration, he gets down and then, you know, sometimes he's the only one and he's waiting for the rest. So this means the shadow striker has got to have loads of acceleration. Now, as far as the shadow striker is concerned, a player with good jumping reach is always going to be preferred over one that doesn't have one. In the central attacking shadow striker position, I normally prefer Erling Haaland. As you can see, he's got great traits. Like likes to beat the offside trap, takes first time shots. He's got fantastic acceleration, agility. Uh, he's got great balance. He's got good finishing, composure. Plus, you know, the, the strength in the air is something else, right? So when you get him breaking um, past defenders, he can either run past defenders or he can arrive in the box and is a perfect target for crosses into the area. So this is going to be something that you're after. Now, ball winning midfielder on defense, always pick a player who's got high aggression and anticipation and concentration. This player is going to be the one that's going to be breaking up a lot of your play. The roaming playmaker, yes, you want a player here who's got passing vision decisions, but you also want somebody who's brave and you can also go in for the tackle. That's important at the end of the day because these, these players are going to be doing a lot of the grunt work in the center of the park. What about substitution strategy? When it comes to this, this tactic, the substitution strategy is always the same. I'm always subbing these four players. These are the four most important players in the tactical system, right? 
when they get tired, you will start conceding goals, which means that you are always going to have players on the bench who are equally as good as these players to come on in the 60th minute. Because the moment the wingbacks get tired, you are in trouble. The moment the two central midfielders get tired, they will start coming at you through the middle. So you always want to make sure that these guys are the best that you can afford or, you know, players that can come on and do the job. As far as the three at the back are concerned, well, here you want the player with the best jump pitch, anticipation, and concentration, right? You want this guy to be able to read the danger and come out and mop it up. You don't want the sweeper keeper to do it because right now, football manager, these goalkeepers seem to come into no come out into no man's land one too many times. So yes, uh, the strikers make it worse for teams defensively. I don't know, right? If it does, then it's not my problem. It's SIs to fix. So. Yes, if it is a problem, as I will probably notice it sooner or later. And uh, this tactic has been quite fun. He's been scoring lots of goals. Erling Haaland is happy. He's scoring lots of goals. I can't wait to see what Erling Haaland can do with this tactical system. But as you probably know, this is uh, stopping being a challenge at the moment. With Man City doing so well, I probably will stop playing this safe and continue with my more challenging journeyman save with Napoli. Okay, the things you want to bear in mind. Pass into space, I don't use it all the time, right? If you've seen my live streams, you've noticed when I'm playing with Napoli and I'm playing a really good team, I normally don't use pass into space because I might have a shadow striker who's great in the air, but I don't want to lose the ball in the middle, so I'd rather go down the flanks and dropping crosses. But when I'm playing with uh, Napoli and we're playing a weaker team, then you see me taking more chances. When I'm playing against a diamond, pass into space is almost mandatory because there's lots of space. When you're playing against a diamond, nobody's on the flank, so you might as well just pop, drop a ball there and let your players run towards it. So it's important to understand that pass into space can be a lot of fun to use, but you need to also kind of uh, be careful with it against really good opposition or even teams that are sitting back and teams that don't want to come out and attack you because they're sitting back all day long waiting for the ball over the top. Pass into space might not, might just give them that ball and allow them to come attack you. So sometimes even against very defensive teams, if I see that I'm not making much headway attacking that space, I will remove pass into space. I might in that particular case decide, hey, you know what? I'm sending a lot of my players in, on attack duty. And I'm just going to barrel down your flanks and put you under a lot of pressure and that's what I've done even with Napoli and it's worked many times. So I hope these little uh, options help you out and I hope you have fun with the tactical system. The tactical system is available for download in the links below this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Meanwhile, stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.